Hi, I'm Tom. For this Trinity Sunday 2023, the first word that pops into my mind is mystery. Not the Agatha Christie kind of mystery, although I love them, but a concept beyond human capacity to fully understand or put into words. The first reading, often referred to as the creation story, could more accurately be described as the creation poem. The rhythms of repeated phrases are the main clue that this literary form is Hebrew poetry. No one would have had to explain to the original Hebrew audience that's what it was, any more than we need to be told that it is a poem when we hear Oh, my love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Oh, my love is like the melody that's sweetly played in tune by Bobby Burns. Our <clears throat> Genesis 1 starts with, in the beginning. In the beginning of what? <laughs> the beginning of everything. In the beginning of who? God created. And then... The Spirit of God was, quote, hovering over the waters, unquote. In two verses, we've introduced our first hints at more than one person in the one God. The stanzas have a bit of a formula after that. Each begins with God said, and then God speaks something into being. In John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, there's a light that's shown on this powerful word that brings things into existence. John wrote, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And then down in verse 14, even more clarity. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So by verse 3 of Genesis, we've introduced the pre-existent God who created everything, the Spirit of God who hovered over the waters, and then the Word, Jesus. Now, Jesus describes in the Gospel reading for today in Matthew 28, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as this pre-existent God, Spirit of God, and Word. And there is a long tradition of using that latter wording from the uh, gospel uh, to describe the triune God, that is the three in one God. God said, and there was day one. God said, and there was day two, and so on. The poem continues beating its rhythmic drum until abruptly at the very beginning of Genesis chapter two, the pattern breaks as the author describes the unique seventh day when we're told, still poetically, that the all-powerful God who speaks everything into existence rested from his work. Many writers have shifted from prose to poetry or to music because the mystery of love was not something that could be adequately comprehended or expressed in a prosaic lab notebook. The Bible resorts to poetry to tell us about creation. The choice of going with poetry tells us that prose is insufficient to allow us to fully comprehend the mystery of creation. The doctrine of Trinity is also a mystery. One of my favorite books on systematic theology was written by Burkhoff. With a very prosaic, systematic expression, he lists off six statements describing the Christian doctrine of the Trinity. One, there is in the divine being but one indivisible essence. Two, in this one divine being, there are three persons or individual subsistences, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three, the whole undivided essence of God belongs equally to each of the three persons. Four, the subsistence and operation of the three persons in the divine being is marked by a certain definite order. And five, there are certain personal attributes by which the three persons are distinguished. For each of these points, Burkhoff goes into much greater depth. 
But finally, we come to his sixth point. <laughs> the church confesses the Trinity to be a mystery beyond the comprehension of man. I don't think having a definition of the Trinity is what our creation accounts hope to inspire. I don't think the proper response to these accounts is to try to figure out the science behind how God created or the chronology of how God created. I think the response the Bible is going for is the worship and wonder that we see in our Psalm reading for this week. The Psalmist wrote in Psalm eight, Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Now that's just an example of how we could respond to the creation poem. Another example is uh, found in Sandy, Sandy Patty's uh, song based on Psalm 8, How Majestic Is Your Name? And I'll put a link to that song in the description and I hope that you will go and uh, enjoy that song as part of your worship uh, re in response to what we have read. Come, let us worship and bow down in wonder at the God who created all that exists, created us in God's image, this mysterious triune creator God. <laughs>